After finishing the homestand on a winning note, your Rangers now take to the road where they have played their best baseball of the season. Tonight, Giovanni Gallardo takes the mound as the Rangers begin a nine-game trip in Boston. They take on the Red Sox. That's coming up next on Fox Sports Southwest. Texas Rangers baseball is presented by AT&T, Uverse TV. Venerable Fenway Park, the first stop on this three-city, nine-game trip for your Texas Rangers. A beautiful evening after a rainy day, and the Rangers hope to keep things looking beautiful here in Beantown. Rangers and the Red Sox coming up for you. Welcome along, everyone, with Tom Greaves, Steve Busby. Join us for this Tuesday night of Rangers baseball, and this should be an exciting matchup. Rangers and the uh, Boston Red Sox tonight. And, Tom, Rangers have been much more comfortable, of late especially, playing away from home. Well, it's nice to have this graphic coming up as we embark <laughs> on a nine-game road trip. I'm not sure what it means this early in the year. You'd like to think your team is going to have a home field advantage when they play at home. So far early in the season, that hasn't been the case. They've played very well on the road. That's nice to see because traditionally this is a pretty tough trip. You go to Boston, you go to New York, and the Indians have also played very well against the Rangers. But since April 26, they pitched very well on the road. Their ERA, opponent's batting average, strikeout to walk ratio, all very good. They've got Giovanni Gallardo on the mound tonight. He's coming off maybe his best outing, certainly one of them. Seven innings, two runs against the very good Kansas City Royals. So hopefully Giovanni will be up to it. Rangers will continue playing well on the road. That would be a great start to this road trip, and they'll uh, come back to Fenway with a little bit more from our pregame coming up right after this on Fox Sports Southwest.
Texas Ford dealers. The EcoBoost Challenge is on at your Texas Ford dealer. Get to your best in Texas Ford dealer today. By AT&T, U-verse TV. U-verse has more live TV channels on the go than cable. And by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. Our Red Sox have taken the field before we get underway here at Fenway. Let's head down and check in with Emily Jones. Em? Well, Buzz, from the Green Monster to Yawkey Way to the pesky pole and the pesky people standing in front of me, Fenway Park is one of the most storied parks in all of Major League Baseball, and it's not lost on the players. We feel like... Uh, you know, Ty Cobb and Babe Ruth are like sitting next to you, I guess. <laughs> but uh, I just like it because, you know, like it's, it's it's historic and it's just fun to kind of play in, um, you know, the fields that, you know, all the old, t- I guess, you know, Hall of Famers played here and a lot of legends or whatever. So, plus it's just different. You know, it's not, um, you know, I like the new ballparks, obviously, but it's just different to see the old style every now and then. And we'll be roaming around Fenway Park throughout the evening and throughout the series. So we hope to give you some uh cool looks at some different aspects of this ballpark guys all right and thanks very much i think prince fielder probably echoed the sentiment of almost everybody that's walked in this field just imagine the people that have walked on there before well ready to get underway shinsu chu will start things off wade miley the left-hander goes to work and fires strike one chu leading off once again for the rangers steps in hitting at 242 for the year Miley working both sides of the plate early. Gets ahead with strike two. Two six home runs. That is the high water mark for the Ranger Ball Club. 17 RBI. Rangers come in at 16 and 22. They are in fourth place in the West, eight and a half behind the uh, surging Houston Astros. Meanwhile, the uh, Red Sox, as we mentioned, third place in the American League East. They are three and a half games behind the Yankees. Got him swinging. Chu is gone. Now Tom's going to tell you about the rest of the Southwest Airlines Texas Rangers starting lineup. Well, Shinsu Chu leads off, followed by Elvis Andrus, who's hitting right now. Prince Fielder is the DH. Adrian Beltre is fourth. Kyle Blanks hits fifth, followed by Mitch Moreland. Tommy Fields at second. Batting eighth, Robinson Chirinos, and the center fielder batting ninth is Delano DeShields. Well, Jeff Bannister's lineup facing the left hander Wade Miley. Elvis takes a fastball for strike one. Our scouting report on Wade Miley pretty good numbers this year. The 560 ERA, not really indicative of uh, how well he has pitched lately. You know, fastball slider, he'll change speeds on that slider. He does not give in to hitters. In other words, he tries to keep the ball out of the middle of home plate no matter what the count is. Ranger hitters will try and take the outside part of the plate away from him, make him work inside if he's going to get a lot of call strikes. Elvis at 235 with a home run and 10 driven in. That ball is hit in the air to left center field. Mookie Betts over near the track and makes the catch for out number two and we'll take a look at the rest of the Red Sox defense tonight it's brought to you by the good folks at Steel. you saw Betts in center he is flanked by Hanley Ramirez in left and Daniel Nava in right Mike Napoli at first Dustin Pedroia's Andrew Bogart's up the middle Pablo Sandoval is at third and Blake Swihart the young catcher is handling Wade Miley. There's a base hit down the line. It caroms off the short wall, so Prince is going to have to hang on at first. But uh, that was a bullet right down the line by the dive of Mike Napoli and Prince aboard with two outs. Yeah, get kind of a bad break on the bounce. It's a hanging slider on the inside part of the plate. Goes by the bag in what looks like a certain double. But unfortunately, it hits the wall where it juts out a little bit and bounces right straight out to Nob in right field instead of rattling around the corner for at least a double. A one on two out. Here's Adrian Beltre hitting at 258. Strike one. One thing we noticed, Buzz, I'm sure people at home are saying, boy, the picture looks just a little bit different. They have the luxury of a camera behind 
center field that has almost the exact angle that you can see directly behind the pitcher. Adrian Beltre follows up fielder's base hit with one of his own. In almost every ballpark, the camera's off to the side, and so it's very difficult to tell exactly where the pitch is, inside or outside. But from this view, you can pretty much call the game as an umpire, mm -hmm. whether it's inside or outside. You can see a ball on the corner, and you can tell whether it's inside or whether it's a little bit outside, off the plate. Unable to do that in most ballparks because that's where the camera has to be, off to the side a little right. bit, and the angle's skewed. I love this angle. Kyle Blanks takes a strike. Yeah, they're able to do that here. They have a platform out in center field above the batter's eye. Right. And uh, they're able to elevate the camera enough so they can look down. There's the a good look at it. That's right behind. That's right in line. Home plate to the mound to second base. So they can get that uh, shot you're talking about, Tom. That really is a, a great angle. Yeah. Kyle yeah, Blanks getting the start tonight. Go ahead. And, and other than the history in this stadium, that's one of the few things that they have that's an <laughs> advantage over the new ballparks. Call strike three. Blanks caught window shopping. And Wade Miley gets the strikeout. No runs on two hits, two left. After a half inning of play, Rangers nothing. Red Sox coming up. about the Austin Red Sox lineup. A lot of new faces in the Red Sox lineup this year. One of them is Mookie Betts leading off in center field. Dustin Tabro Pedroia, the old standby, is at second base batting second. David Ortiz is third, followed by newcomer Hanley Ramirez in left field. Pablo Sandoval, ex-giant, gets the start at third base. Ex-ranger Mike Napoli is batting sixth at first base. Daniel Nava is in right field. Alexander Bogarts is a shortstop. And catching is Blake Swihart. And the first pitch of the night by the 29-year-old right-hander, Giovanni Gallardo, is in for strike one to Mookie Betts. Betts a 221 average, but he has five home runs and has driven in 21. That is second best in the league for leadoff men. And, uh, our progressive scouting report for Giovanni Gallardo. Coming off his longest outing of the year, and he had great results. Got a W last time. And it's uh, a good time for him to pitch against the Red Sox because they are scuffling. You have the, the two guys that we talked about in our uh, our pregame with uh, Ramirez and with Sandoval not producing for them right now. And that could always change next week or the week after. And Giovanni Gallardo trying to make sure that doesn't change tonight. The one-two pitch. That will even the count for him. 64 degrees at uh, game time here tonight. Very pleasant evening in Boston after rain uh, much of the morning and into the very early afternoon. It dried out and uh, it has turned into a great evening. Clouds have broken overhead. We got a shot of uh, when we were doing the lineup shot of uh, Ray Davis and Neil Liebman, a couple of the Ranger owners. The, they are in town. 
watching their uh, their ball club play here tonight. 3-2 pitch in the air to right field. Shinsu Chu camping under it, takes it for out number one, and that'll bring up Dustin Pedroia. Let's take a look at the rest of the Rangers defense delivered to you by Fred Loya Insurance. Now you saw Chu in right field. Delano to Shields gets the start in center, and Kyle Blanks in left. On the infield, Mitch Moreland at first, Tommy Field back at second, Elvis Andrews the shortstop, Adrian Beltre at the hot corner, and Robinson Chirinos is catching tonight for Gallardo. Giovanni at 3 and 5 at 394 earned run average. Last time out, seven innings of uh, very fine work to get him his third win. Pedroia takes ball one. 276 for the Red Sox second baseman. He's had some pretty good success against Gallardo. Three for six with a home run in there. One and one. Twenty-two game streak in play for uh, Dustin Pedroia. He's reached base in all 22 of those ball games with a uh, hit, a walk, hit by pitch. It's an on-base streak for him. He has uh, gotten things going. And again, the, I guess the model of consistency, the Red Sox have hit him anywhere from first to fifth in his career. One outside, two and two. And it seems like no matter what they've asked him to do, he has responded very positively. Yeah, even if you bat him third, fourth, or fifth, he may not be the guy that hits 35 home runs for you, but... He's going to get on base. His on base percentage is always up there. He drives in runs. It's a lot of doubles. So he's suited for pretty much anywhere you want in the bat. And then speaking of doubles, he pounds this one down in the corner. One hop off the wall. And into second with a one out two bagger is Dustin Pedroia. The ball got in on him a little bit, jammed him. Left fielder in this ballpark tends to shade a little bit towards center field where there's a lot more room. And this kind of a ball, it's a good fastball right on the inside corner. Jammed him, but there's a lot of room down the left field line for just that kind of a ball. Not hit that hard, but didn't have to be. I'm not so sure this is the kind of ballpark where you want to pitch on the corner inside the right hander. You're going to come inside, I would think that you'd much rather have it six or eight inches off the off the plate see if you can get him to swing at a ball but uh, inside pretty easy to turn on for some of these guys well I think I think the difference was is that you can jam a guy in a normal ballpark and get an out at the warning track even a strong guy but here you can jam them and yeah. that fly ball at the warning track goes over the green monster That's so right. it is a little more dangerous David Ortiz up there Rangers go into a pretty good shift Three uh, infielders on the right side of the diamond. Adrian Beltre, the only Ranger on the left side, and that's because uh, Dustin Pedroia out at second. Adrian normally would be over in the shortstop spot without a runner on. Ortiz, 236, five home runs, and 14 driven in. Good pitch to the inside corner there, and it's two and one. Now our four leaderboard showing you the all time leaders. In extra base hits, David Ortiz 26th with 1,042. Just behind uh, Chipper Jones by 13. Just past Pete Rose. Off the outside edge, and it's 3 and 1. Ortiz batting third of the order. He'll be followed by Hanley Ramirez, the cleanup man. One on, one out in the top or bottom of the first inning. Hard hit by Moreland down the right field line. Being waved around third is Pedroia. There'll be no throw. And the Red Sox on Ortiz RBI single lead 1-0. Well, Ortiz had to hit that ball pretty hard to get it through the hole between first and the shaded infield. There wasn't a whole lot of room there. But he did. He gets a cut fastball right in the center of the plate. And he does hit it hard, and he does locate it pretty much exactly in the middle of the distance between second and first. Oh, right by Mitch at first base. 
Well, hit ball picks up the first run of the game. Yeah, and that's an area where the uh, Red Sox have been struggling in futility, hitting with runners in scoring position. They have the lowest batting average in the major leagues at 203. Rangers were uh, scuffling and still are at 220, but that uh, pales in comparison to what the Red Sox have been going through. But Ortiz came through with that one, so one nothing Boston. Hanley Ramirez takes ball one. Ramirez batting at 264 with 10 home runs and a team high 22 runs driven in. One for seven against uh, Giovanni Gallardo in his career. Folks around here saying that uh, Ramirez really hasn't been the same since he ran into the wall, the, the short wall, down the left field line here at Fenway Park uh, back in the first week of May. But since then, he has really struggled. You can tell those numbers uh, will back that up. He hasn't driven in a run. Good pitch. Really get a good idea where the catcher sets his glove and you can see exactly where that pitch is, right? On the inside corner, from tailing to get there, down and in. A ball and two strikes to Ramirez. Red Sox next to last in the American League with a 230 team batting average. And they're 13th, which is the second to last. And on base percentage, just 311. Broken bat looper into center. That's going to fall for a base hit. Stopping at second is Ortiz. And, you know, Handler Ramirez shattered his bat, but gets a base knock out of the whole situation. He is aboard first. This is not going to be one of those innings like Kobe Lewis had in his last start, where everything they hit finds a hole. That ball smashed his bat. Pedroia's was a little ball. A little Fly ball down the left field line off the hand. Ortiz hit his ball hard. But when you smash a bat like that, you hope to get it out, but it just blooped it in. So three consecutive hits, a double followed by two singles. First and second, still just one out. Pablo Sandoval, switch hitting third baseman, will step in. You see that Gallardo has handled Sandoval pretty well in the numerous matchups they they've had over the years. That's just a bit outside for ball one. Sandoval 269 for the season, five home runs and 16 RBI. Former San Francisco Giant now making his way across the country to Play for the Red Sox. And Sandoval's one for his last 18, but one thing to keep in mind for him, he's two for 41 batting right handed. It's 366 batting left handed. So he's batting left handed right now, which means he's a much different hitter than what his average might indicate because of how poorly he's been right handed this year. Two balls and a strike to him. That's interesting. A, a guy that's had his history, and he's been a good hitter uh, you know, throughout his career, would have that much of a difference, even for just a short sample of six, seven weeks. Yeah. And you hear switch hitters. We had Mac on the other night talking about it. Hurt Mark and Cher talk about it. How you can be feeling great one way and be in a total slump the other way. Same guy, but different side of the plate. It looks like what he's experiencing right now, batting right handed. Pitch is low and inside, and the count goes to three balls and a strike. Gallardo having a long first inning. His next pitch will be the 25th. Got runners at first and second. Just one out here in the first inning. A run across. That's out of play. Sandoval might have expanded his strike zone just a bit. One of the things you saw Sandoval do there, though, that he's very adept at is taking a pitch away and trying to hit it off that monster. He uh, sprays the ball around pretty well, especially as a left-handed hitter. Well, full count. Ortiz at second. Ramirez at first. 
Gallardo checks him the payoff pitch. The left center field dying in a hurry. That's down for a base hit. Ortiz had to hold up to make sure it fell, and he stops at third. Four consecutive hits have loaded the bases with just one out, and Mike Napoli is coming up, but he will not hit until Mike Maddox has a chance to visit the mound. Well, it's another ball that wasn't struck that solidly. If he hit it on the good part of the bat, it probably would have been an easy catch for Delano in center field, but he hit it off the handle and dumped it in front of the center fielder. Yeah, the inning, 14 strikes, 12 balls offered up by uh, Giovanni Gallardo. Made some good pitches that have turned out to hurt him. Jam shot by Ramirez and also by Sandoval. Ortiz hit the ball sharply. And Pedroia got uh, slightly jammed but doubled into the corner. Well, just on the face of it, you say four hits, well, he must be pitching terribly, and it's not. Not a whole lot of luck lately. Well, here's Mike Napoli, who has not had a whole luck this whole lot of luck this season. 162 is Nap's average. Cuts through a high bur a high uh, splitter slider. Slider. Here's Ortiz over at third base. He had the RBI single down at second. Hanley Ramirez and Pablo Sandoval is trailing over at first. 0-1 the count to Napoli. Three home runs, 11 driven in. One ball and one strike. Nap in his career, six grand slams. Former Ranger, a 305 hitter with the sacks full. One ball and two strikes. Well, Gallardo looking for a strikeout, a pop up, a double play ball. Anything to uh, further the cause here with the bases full and one out. Napoli this year against right handed pitching, hitting just 145. Got him swinging. Perfect pitch. Big strikeout for Giovanni Gallardo. There are two gone, and Daniel Nava is coming up. There's that sweeping cutter, slider, whatever you want to call it. Starts on the outside corner, and it just keeps on going until it reaches the point where Knapp can't reach it with the end of his bat too far outside. Well, a huge second out. Daniel Nava steps in, a 160 hitter. Is without a home run. He has driven in seven. Gallardo picks the sign out and fires strike one. Nava one for three in previous matchups against Giovanni Gallardo. For Gallardo, this is his third start here in Fenway Park. Number two, of course, coming as a member of the uh, Milwaukee Brewers. Got him on the fist and a roller to short. Elvis on the run, throws him out, and that'll do it. So further damage averted. The Red Sox get a run on four hits and strand three. After one, the Red Sox won. The Rangers nothing. Foxport Southwest.
fantastic. And fans who wear Ranger jersey to the game that night will get to participate in a pregame parade and will receive a voucher for a free ticket to a select games in uh, August or September. And plus, the uh, Texas Ranger retail locations are offering 15% off all Rangers jerseys from now until the 29th. Get your tickets from May 29th at TexasRangers.com. Mitch Moreland starts things off in the Rangers second by singling to left field. So Mitch continuing the uh, hot streak that he entered on Sunday. is uh, right back here with a base hit in his first at bat on Tuesday. One on, nobody out, and Tommy Field coming up. It felt like the Red Sox had a big inning in the bottom of the first. It took so long, so many pitches, but it was when it was all over and done with, it only amounted to one run. The Rangers have had three base hits in the last four batters themselves. Yeah, Yolani Iardo was forced to throw 32 pitches in that first inning. And he limited it to one run. Well, if, fortunately for the Rangers, David Ortiz was the uh, lead base runner after he got the... RBI single that kind of clogged the bases up. Fastball into Tommy Field. It is nothing in one. Field, 238 average, a couple of home runs. He has driven in two. It's Borland, the runner at first base with nobody out. One and one. Checking with uh, Tony Beasley down there at third base. There's Tony. In the dirt. And the count goes to two and one. Mentioned Wade Miley, left hander, former Arizona Diamondback. Came over uh, this past offseason from Arizona. There's a strike here. Ruben De La Rosa and Alan Webster headed to uh, the Diamondbacks in return. I saw Ruby De La Rosa pitched a nice game last night for the Diamondbacks. 2-2 mm -hmm. two -two pitch. That's foul back. Red Sox were willing to give up young talent. Only the veteran established guy. And Miley, uh, boy, really started off well in his career with Arizona. Came up in 2011 for uh, eight ball games, but in 2012 he was a 16 game winner. 16 and 11 was 10 and 10 the next year, and then uh, last year just 8 and 12. So it was going the wrong way as far as the Diamondbacks were concerned. He gets the call on the inside corner to Tommy Fields. For strike three. Now one thing he does well when things are going his way is this. He can make that fastball. Looks like it cuts a little bit and jam right hand hitters on the inside part of the plate. Borderline pitch that went his way. The one out, Moreland still at first. Robinson Chirinos, your backstop, will uh, step in. Chirinos, a 184 mark, three home runs, 13 driven in. play on the first base side. Miley's been a pretty durable guy. He's one of only six pitchers to have 33 or more starts in the last two years. You would think there'd be a lot more than that. But only six people have done it in the last two years. He's averaged about almost right at 200 innings pitched over the last three years. And that's a commodity anymore, especially being left-handed. That as a starter, you're left-handed, and you, you give a team 200 innings. That you're in pretty short supply. Yeah. In the dirt, it gets away from Swihart. Go down to second. Goes Mitch Moreland. A wild pitch. Finally, now has uh, put a man in scoring position for the Rangers. I was talking to Nolan Ryan the other day, and I asked him that question when he's watching a ball game. And he hears announcers like us talk about a pitcher who threw 200 innings, or that's what you're shooting for with your starting pitcher. It shows his reliability and his durability. What did someone from his era think about that? And he said, well, it used to drive me crazy, but I've gotten over that now. Got in on Chirinos a little bit. He sends a fly ball pretty deep into left field, but Chandler Ramirez is able to go back there and battle the elements. <laughs> he 
not real sure of himself out there in left field yet, but he made the catch. You know, there, there are plenty of years where Nolan Ryan and Fergie Jenkins and you see Ramirez go back and make this catch. And catching all the pitchers from back then, all the frontline pitchers would have 200 innings pitched by about the end of August, beginning, maybe the beginning of August yeah. for some of them, and have 300, 350 innings pitched. But you, you can't necessarily gauge the pitchers today by what they did back then. It's just an entirely different mindset, training set. And they're just not a four man rotation. There's a five man rotation. I guess pitchers are just groomed to do a little bit less than they yeah. did back then. It's the only way I can figure it out. Well, the standards have, have changed, Tom. You're right. And it's, uh, you know, it starts all the way from little bit on uh, getting used to pitch counts. And it's not how many innings can, am I supposed to go, it's how many pitches am I supposed to throw? Right. And you get to that pitch count, and, and that's it. You know, if, if Nolan or Fergie or Tom Seaver came up today and pitched in five man rotations, They'd be like Felix Hernandez probably throwing yep. 230 235 innings and you know you look at Felix doing that every year and it's it's the sign of a guy that goes out there every day and pitches deep into ball games at the top of the at the top of the list in the present day day game today and those guys would be there if that's where they came if this is the time they came up and probably if the top pitchers today came up 30 40 years ago they'd be in four man rotations and the best ones would be doing the same thing. Two and two to Delano to Shields. And he's caught looking at the third strike and Wade Miley with four strikeouts through two inning strands, the second runner on a base hit after one and a half. Red Sox leading one nothing. Red Sox up to bat and I am roaming Fenway Park which is basically just a built-in excuse for me to check out the concession items and so I went in search of finding something unique to Fenway something you can't find at Globe Life Park in Arlington and here's what I found a lobster roll it looks heavenly I'm going to toss it back up to you Buzz and Tom as I delve in well I thought you were tossing the mm. lobster roll up here mm. I was all set to have that you want a I'll napkin? You want a you. napkin, Em? I need one. <laughs> it's heavenly. Uh huh. And um, it's really good. And I shouldn't eat on live television. That but would, nonetheless, okay. that would be my all-time favorite ballpark item, right it there. It is so good. Lobster roll. Lobster my goal roll. is to find something here that we can't find at home right. each day of the series. So and we'll they, see what I find. They game two. They would probably love some of our barbecue items that we have back home. Up here. Or the boomstick or the, the, <laughs> the Beltray Buster. There you go. You can put a five pound lobster on it. They're not selling anything up here that needs luggage to carry it back to your seat. <laughs> no, they're not. And you know what? Another thing is, this is a, a very relatively small lobster roll for the price that I paid. 
So I feel like in Texas at Globe Life Park, you're getting a, you're getting your money's worth, and, and this is good. It's just smaller portions. So are you saying you're going to go back and get another one when you get done with that? Uh, I'm not ruling it out. <laughs> <laughs> well, it looks good. It looks great, as a matter of fact. It is. It is very good. I approve. <laughs> Yeah, stop talking to me so I can eat and enjoy my dinner. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Let's wipe the mayonnaise off your face. Xander Bogart starting things off here in the second inning. He's going to hit a two-hopper out to Elvis. That is out number one. Bogart grounds out. Now Blake Swihart, the young catcher, comes out. A lot of Ranger fans at the ballpark today, Buzz. Sitting in some green monster seats is 91 year old Jean Johnston. She's here with her son and daughter in law, a couple of granddaughters and a grandson enjoying the game. And boy, those seats, those are tremendous seats. That's where Jean is sitting, 91 years old, enjoying the ball game. Perfect night for a game. Great seats to watch a game in green monster seats. Been up there a couple of times just to walk around. This is one ballpark where, when you get here early, it's fun to just walk around and sit there and remember games that you've watched here, games that you've played here. Not many, not many stadiums other than I guess Wrigley Field that are left that have the same kind of history that this place yeah. does. It's the oldest ballpark in uh, in baseball. Yeah, 1912 is when it opened. As Prince said in his interview with Emily, it's the only place in the American League you can go and. Imagine that Ted Williams stood in the batter's box and Mickey Mantle yep. roamed center field and whoever your favorite players were, they played here. And when you walk the tunnel from the dugout to the clubhouse, it feels like it's about 75 years old when you're walking <laughs> down that tunnel. It has that slightly dingy smell to it that makes you think of the old days. The wooden floor still makes the same noise when yep. you. Bang your feet on it and go, man, I remember that noise running down here and getting ready for a ball game. Just a great feeling when you come here. I had a lot of people come here for the first time and say it wasn't a comfortable place to watch a game because the aisles are narrow. There's not much room between seats, but that's the way it was in the old days. And to have this kind of history, that's what you put up with when that's you come right. to the ballpark. You don't think of those things. New Englanders. Don't come to the park and say, I didn't have enough foot room. They just come here and say, I went to Fenway Park. Yeah. Went to the park and watched the bad game. And some of them sit behind a big post like that. <laughs> and even they don't complain. Well, Giovanni Gallardo able to get a couple of quick outs here in the uh, second inning. Two up, two away. Mookie Betts now up in for his second time. Betts began things by flying to right field. Takes a strike on the inner corner. Well, that's a 206 average in the month of May. He is among the uh, Red Sox that have had a tough month. 0 2 now the count. Also want to thank Rosa Rattery, I think it is, and Jerry St. John. They're from the Texas Rangers Women's Club. They're here today. They sent up some pecan. Hi, bars for us. Thank you very much, ladies. Hope you enjoy the game. A lot of folks with Rangers destinations. Yeah, they're here tonight. Another there's foul off the right. There's only 35,000 seats here, I guess. And I'm looking down the left field line in the upper deck, which is not that really not that far above the playing surface. And wondering how all those Ranger fans got those seats together out there. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I think they knew somebody. That's one thing. When you sit in the upper deck here, you still got a good seat. Sure do. So low to the ground. There's a bunch of Ranger fans out there. All together. A ball and two strikes to bets. Base hit up the middle. Well, Betts with his first hit of the night. He is aboard with two outs. And Dustin Pedroia will be next. And the last group that's here, last couple that's here, Ken and Barbara Claussen are here. They're from Hideaway, Texas. 
enjoying Fenway Park and their Rangers. Thank you all for being here tonight and supporting the Rangers. That's the Pedroia. Had the first of four consecutive hits by the Red Sox in the first inning against Gallardo. Yomani only yielding the one run. One ball, no strikes. Well, Pedroia with that base hit now up to 281 with the batting average. Gallardo checking bets at first. One ball and one strike. Red Sox not a very aggressive running team. 14 stolen bases is all they have. But Betts has five of those 14. He's by far the team leader. Don Farrell there. Manager check, checking things out from his vantage point. He's stolen 14 in 19 attempts. Betts is uh, five out of six. And maybe a spot here with Pedroia up and two outs where he would try and get himself in the scoring position. Giovanni, a belt high set. And he will make a little toss over there to drive Betts back. Gallardo getting ready to throw his 50th pitch of the night. I mentioned he had 32 of them in the first inning. Beltray charges that ball and grabs it before it can short hop again. No runs a hit and one left. We have finished two at Fenway. Red Sox won, Rangers nothing on Fox Sports Southwest. West is brought to you by your Texas Ford dealers. The EcoBoost Challenge is on at your Texas Ford dealer. Get to your best in Texas Ford dealer today. And by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Now Shinsu Chu swinging at the first pitch from uh, Wade Miley here in the third inning. And he grounds out the second one away. Now Chu 0 for 2 tonight having struck out to begin the proceedings here this evening. Next will be Elvis Andrews. Elvis made a fly ball to center back in the first. Rangers with uh, three hits. Against Miley have not uh, been able to capitalize on him yet. And pitch inside to Andrews. Elvis coming off a homestand that saw him hit 304. At seven for 23. Excellent uh, seven ball games at home. 
one and one. He has a modest three game hitting streak going. Boston, another team that he has enjoyed hitting against over the years. Not quite as much as he enjoyed Cleveland, but uh, still pretty good. He's hit safely in the last eight ball games against the uh, Boston Red Sox at 406. And here in Fenway, almost as good, 364 in 15 games. Daniel Nava takes care of that fly ball. Two outs and before Prince Fielder comes up. Let's send it back to Dana Larson for a Mazda game break. All right, Dana, thank you. And it always said that Bryce Harper is one of the most talented young players in the game. And it's like this is the year he's going to show everybody that he is. That's a pretty good 19 days. You get 10 so. home runs. <laughs> Holy cow. Some of those home runs have gone a long way, too. Speaking of a long way, there's a fly ball to deep left field. Ramirez back at the wall. It is off the wall. And Fielder into second with a stand-up double. Not for a second that had a chance to get into the seats up there, but... About halfway up the wall above the uh, scoreboard. And Prince Fielder, another multiple hit game as he gets his second base hit of the night. It probably doesn't matter because the ball was so high, but if you're the left fielder, once you get back to the wall and you look up, you have to gauge how high it's going to hit. And that ball hit so high that Ramirez, who's not familiar playing in left field in this ballpark or playing the outfield, period, is a shortstop. Then you back off and catch it on a hop and hope you can hold the man to a single. Might not have been able to do that anyway. Ball was hit so high. Yeah. But when you get close to the wall like that and it hits above you, then it's just going to bounce towards towards shortstop. Yeah, as we mentioned, I guess it was last inning. He doesn't look real comfortable out there yet in left field. No. That's got to be tough though for a shortstop to go out there with a monster looming right in back of you. Belt right. The sky's one to shallow right center field. Betts and Nava. It'll be Mookie Betts to make the ball on the catch, and that'll do it. Rangers get a two-out double, but Strand Fielder, after two and a half, Red Sox one, Rangers nothing. Park will get a Rangers beach towel courtesy of Coca-Cola. Come on out, catch the first game of a three-game series against the White Sox and pick up this summer giveaway. Call 972 Rangers or you can visit TexasRangers.com for tickets. David Ortiz leading off the Red Sox third inning. Boston on top, 1-0. Because David Ortiz able to drive home Dustin Pedroia in the first inning for Ortiz is 15th RBI of the year. And 
Gallardo coming back inside gets the called strike. It is one and one. Ortiz hitting 242. Five home runs for him. Red Sox uh, sixth in the American League with 38 home runs as a team. That is into the shift. Fields from shallow right field throwing on a bounce to Mitch Moreland. A nice pick by Moreland, by Moreland at first base. And what looked like a relatively simple ground ball the second turned into a little bit of a tough play for Tommy's. Obviously out in right field on the grass on the run going toward center field. Has to, even with Ortiz running from way out there you still have to get a little something on the throw so he can't beat it out. Yeah, I would imagine looking at that Tommy would have said well with Ortiz run I should have stopped probably planted my feet probably that's okay. You just can't you just, you, you're not used to being there. Yeah, you just right. kind of panic a little bit. I can't take too much time. That's right. No one gone. Here's Hanley Ramirez who got sawed off his first time up and singled the center field. The bat exploded in his hands when he made contact, but he got the base hit. Now the average up to 269 for the left fielder. Ramirez coming over from the Dodgers in the offseason. You mentioned he and Sandoval, the two guys that Red Sox brought in for the middle of the order to uh, surround David Ortiz, and hit in front of Mike Napoli. And uh, they felt that uh, their run production part of the lineup would go from one through about eight. And it just hasn't happened that way yet. But that's not to say that it won't. They're Red Sox are 12th in the league in scoring. <laughs> And 51 runs in 38 ball games. That's a happy young man there. That's a happy family right there. <laughs> Getting ready to fire it back too. <laughs> One and two. That will even things up. Well, there are the uh, numbers for the two newest Red Sox in May now. Pablo Sandoval hitting just 211. Three home runs, five RBI. Just getting on base a 250 clip. 13 games in May. Ramirez with no home runs or RBI. And that's the thing that has really uh, hurt the Red Sox in that regard. And these are the guys you brought in to uh, produce the runs. Didn't not necessarily hit a home runs, which they will anyway, but drive in the runs. And that has been the, the big bugaboo for the Red Sox for the whole year, really. The ability to drive in the runs, hit with runners in scoring position. Imagine 203 for the Red Sox coming in That's for the entire year, hitting with runners in scoring position. Elvis had him played perfectly. Two gone. Again, as uh, Yolani Gallardo did last time against Kansas City, getting a lot more ground balls than fly balls. A little over a two to one ratio of ground balls to fly balls last time. The transformation from uh, the strikeout pitcher that Mike Maddox knew when he got to Milwaukee and a fly ball pitcher to a guy that uh, doesn't strike out as many but gets a lot more ground balls. Base is empty with two outs for Pablo Sandoval. Sandoval singled into left center his first time. Rice is that one out of play down the left side. Sandoval a 274 average. Gallardo back to the plate. One ball and one strike. Sandoval having much better success in this ballpark than he has on the road. Came into the game hitting 327 here at home. Little tapper down the first baseline. Tough play for Gallardo. Nice. He goes nice. into foul territory <laughs> to make the throw. And that really was the only way he could get the job done. And he did. So three ground balls, three quick outs. Red Sox gone. 
Boston leading 1-0 after three. continue the series against the White Sox. So head on out to Globe Live Park for an early summer game and enjoy all the ballpark hot dogs you can eat for just a buck each. Visit TexasRangers.com for tickets or you can call 972 Rangers. Kyle Blank starts things off for Texas here in the top of the fourth inning. He blanks Moreland and Field to face Wade Miley. Miley has allowed uh, one hit each of the last two innings after allowing two in the first inning. No damage on the scoreboard as far as runs are concerned yet. Kyle Blanks called out on strikes in the first. Takes ball one high and away. Miley, the 28-year-old, he's a Louisiana. Two balls and two strikes. Miley with uh, a real good feel about pitching, and uh, apparently that's something he's had from a fairly young age. Off the end of the bat, shallow center. Going out, Pedroia still going back, and makes the catch right in front of Mookie Betts, the center fielder. Now Miley came into the game with a 560 ERA. His last start was a pretty solid start. He beat Oakland 2 to nothing, pitched into the seventh inning. He's struggling earlier in the season, but he's throwing a pretty nice game right now. 70% of his pitches have been strikes. And he had thrown too many pitches down the middle of the plate. They've yeah. been on all sides of the plate, but not, any, not too many of them were on the middle of the plate. Works high and away to Mitch Borland. Mitch had a single the other way, hit it in the left field his first time up there. And that really was the scouting report on when Miley is good. He throws very few in that center square that you talk about, Tom. Lives out there on the edges, mm -hmm. and you can understand why. I mean, he doesn't; his stuff doesn't line up a radar gun. It's an average fastball, pretty good movement. He can make it move both ways. He hasn't given up a home run to a left-hand hitter in 15 starts. Prince almost had one. Break that streak. Two balls and a strike to Mitch. Moreland now just one click below the 300 level. Three and one. No, Moreland trying to get aboard with one out. Tommy Field, the Ranger second baseman, will follow in the order. In tight, ball four. No, Moreland draws a walk. One on and one out for Field. First walk surrendered by either pitcher tonight. Tommy Field called out on strikes the first time he got up there. Tommy.
Miami now at uh, 227 in the average. This is seventh start at second base. The Rangers called up a week ago yesterday to join the ball club. Miley, a check of first. One and one. Checking down there with uh, Tony Beasley, the third base coach. And might be a situation where you want to try and put Mitch Moreland in uh, in motion, see if he can open up a hole for Tommy Field. He handles the bat pretty well. Check swing. Did he go around? Yes, he did. He appealed down to first. Making that call is Mike Winters. Uh, I've seen a call both ways. Now Miley's set for the one-two pitch. Good look at the defense. A step or so around to the left for the middle of the Red Sox infield. Pedroia and Bogarts. In the dirt. And the count now is full. Miley having a little trouble finishing off either Moreland or Tommy Field. Field trying to join Moreland to get aboard. Robinson Chirinos, the Ranger catcher, will follow. Miley set the payoff pitch. Got him swinging. And a changeup. Yep. 84 miles an hour and a fastball count. And he had good success with it. Fifth strikeout for Wade Miley. It's exactly like a fastball. About eight miles an hour slower. Well, Tommy Field has struck out both times that he's faced Miley tonight. And Robinson Chirinos now will step in with two outs and Moreland at first. Chirinos skied the left field in the second inning. Marlon at first drew a one out walk. One out later, he is still there. Right up the chute. Towering pop up on the infield near second. Pedroia, it drops the ball. You could see him having it trouble with that the whole time. He was staggering around a little bit and then really looked unsteady as he went to glove it and it popped off the top of his glove. That, that's about as high as you'll see a pop up in the infield. That had some. Big time hang time. And Pedroia is underneath it, waiting, 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 staggering, and caught off the side of his glove. Huh? That one basically was just too high to handle. Oh, an error on Pedroia. Not much of a breeze tonight. It's just uh, as high as that thing was. And you got to remember in this ballpark, the, the second deck is not very high. So the wind, whatever breeze there is, really affects every pop up that's that high. Most ballparks, it doesn't uh, doesn't affect it unless it's blowing in from center field. But you get a lot of uh, a lot of a breeze affecting balls here at Fenway. The runners at the corners with two outs and the liner to Shields taking strike one. That's. Uh, that error, by the way, on Pedroia, his first in almost uh, in better than a month. Take it back. It was the his last error was the uh, 17th of April, 27 ball games ago, and Pedroia making that one. The Red Sox third in the league with uh, only 17 errors prior to that one. Fastball that uh, got by to Lionel De Shields. It's one and two. Delino called out on strikes in the second. There's that fastball with the cutting action uh -huh. coming back toward the middle of the plate. From that angle, you can really see that slight movement on it. it looks slight, but has a big effect on the hitter. They're going right back there with it, too. There's a slider they got down and in. Two balls, two strikes. That's six ball games. Delino to Shields. 
a 421 average with two runs driven in and a triple. O'Malley now with six strikeouts. He strands runners at the corners. An error and a walk. After three and a half, one nothing Boston. Southwest Airline. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. And by the Mazda 6. JD Power is awarded the Mazda 6, highest ranked vehicle appeal among mid sized cars. Great shot of uh, downtown Boston, the Prudential Center, shrouded in uh, low clouds. Very comfortable night, though, 64 degrees at uh, first pitch, and temperatures remain pretty much stationary. Mike Napoli starting things off for Boston here in the fourth inning. Napoli 0 for 1 with a strikeout. Nap, of course, a member of those World Series Ranger teams that everyone remembers. Two balls, no strikes. Giovanni Gallardo getting set for his 65th pitch of the night. On the outside corner. Gallardo will throw uh, 42 strikes out of the 65 pitches now. Well, he's gotten that, uh, that ratio up just a bit. It's a chopper foul outside third. That evens the count to Napoli. His third year here in Boston. That ball is hammered to left field. If it's fair, it's gone. It is gone. Mike Napoli, a vicious line drive that just kept going, is. Fourth home run of the year, and the Red Sox lead it 2 0. Uh, Napoli has not been swinging the bat very well this year. You can see him the first time up with the bases loaded, fish for the slider away. That time he got the hanger, and even when you're not swinging the bat well, when you get a ball here, it's pretty tough not to hit it. That's right down the center of the plate. That's not where Giovanni was trying to throw it. He was trying to make the same pitch. That he struck him out with the first time up, which was down away and a little bit off the plate. As it was, that hanger in the middle of the plate almost knocked the sign down right down the left field line. Oh, that's a, that's a rope. That is. You know, and that sound is even magnified here in this ballpark. That's, what, that's one of the be. better sounds of the year right there, I think. <laughs> Daniel Novick. 
gets jammed and rolls one out to Tommy Field. That's out number one. Well, now, but a pair of uh, jam shot round outs. He is over two. And Sandra Bogarts will come out. And how many times we see Mike Napoli do that in a Ranger uniform? Hanger out over the plate and just hit a rope somewhere out of the ballpark. He's definitely strong. It hit him a long way. That one probably got out of the ballpark as fast as any home yeah. run this year. There's a fly ball. That's hit deep to left field. Back at the wall as Blanks. It is high off the wall. And into second base, Sandra Bogarts with a double. Hit about three quarters of the way up the monster. Matter of fact, it almost hit that ladder. It uh, spans the monster from the uh, scoreboard on up. We can see Kyle Blanks, who hasn't played left field here before, kind of experiencing the same feeling that Hanley Ramirez felt. You see the ball, you get a little too close to the wall, and then it goes right by you. Again, it probably didn't make much difference because Bogarts runs well enough, would have had it double anyway. I think where it comes into play is much as anything is when there's men on base maybe on first base right and the ball gets by you could allow him to come all the way around nobody on base single or double probably going to be a double anyway. the Bogarts at second now Blake Swihart young catcher up there for his second at bat he hits one foul outside first there's that ladder we were talking about I think one one day we counted out here there are, there are 27 potential different angles of carom off that wall and ladders included in that. Well, that one looked like it did hit the ladder and bounce a little bit more towards center field than mm -hmm. Kyle anticipated. That's pretty tough to play a ball off the ladder. You got a pretty good eyesight <laughs> to know that that ball is going to hit the ladder. And then if it does you have no idea whether it's going to the right left or right back at you. It's just one you chalk it up there's not much you can do about it. And apparently those little vertical lines that are you know, on either side of the ladder too, the seams in the wall come into play every once in a while. It's kind of a funny carom off those. Chopper to the right side goes foul. That's why Hart up there is still with a counter. No balls, two strikes. Yeah, but if you take the, the top of the scoreboard that runs all the way from the left field foul pole out to the 379 mark in left center, the sides of that, and all the numbers and everything in there, you've got a whole bunch of different possibilities of, of balls caroming different ways. And all those are the manual scoreboard has a little inset spots for the numbers and the letters. Still on two. And you noticed all the dents that they don't repair in the wall out there too. Responsible for a few of those dudes. <laughs> gave up some of those. Hitting them or giving them up? Giving them up. <laughs> Gallardo, a check of second. He misses outside. One ball and two strikes. Red Sox leading two nothing now. Two runs on seven hits for Boston. Majors, no runs on four hits through the first four innings. Weihart first time up had a fly ball to center field. A man just 23 years of age and apparently uh, one of the deals people talked a lot about the Red Sox going after Cole Hamels of the uh, of the Phillies and one of the people that the Phillies demanded in return if that trade were consummated was Blake Swihart and the uh, Red Sox said nope not doing it. His uh, Red Sox debut this year behind the plate at 23 years of age. Another one two pitch. Tried the back door and somebody put a lock on it. Two and two. Fox tracker showing that just a, a little bit outside. Chopper foul. That's why hard a switch hitter. Had no 
most of the starts. The uh, Red Sox just finished the series with Seattle Mariners. It's my heart in that the series went three for nine. Currently, he's got a, a modest two game hitting streak going. Call strike three. Gallardo flirted with that outside corner and finally got Mike Malinsky to bring up that right hand. Well, when you see it from the angle that we can see it at, watch the catcher's glove, and there's the ball. Right? You can see exactly where it is when you go to look at the Fox tracks. Right? Almost touching the outside corner. Certainly within the boundary of being called a strike. He also had some pretty good movement on it too. That ball was going away from Swihart. Not much you're going to do with that pitch, but close enough to be called a strike. You have, a, have to have a little margin for error for an umpire. An inch or so either way, especially when the ball's got that kind of movement on it. Well, Gallardo with his second strikeout. Two gone now for Mookie Betts. That's the leadoff man for the Red Sox. One for two tonight. Single to center his last time up there after flying to right to start things. Beltre cuts off that bouncer in the hole and uh, fires to first. That'll do it. Red Sox, though, put another on the board. Mike Napoli with the leadoff home run. On to the fifth we go. 2 nothing, Boston. By a score of two to nothing as we head to the top of the fifth and I have made my way here atop the green monster um, really cool section of seating here where uh, people can take in the game from atop the famed green monster and earlier today we got a chance to actually go inside the green monster we accompanied Colby Lewis and Kyle Blanks inside behind the scoreboard we got to see the metal numbers how they switch everything out it's a very uh, manual operation back there also some of the signatures that are on the wall there are thousands upon thousands of those and Colby was actually looking for his he said he signed the green monster in 2002 we couldn't ever locate his signature so he said he's going to go back tomorrow and try to sign again but really one of the great things about this ballpark one of the unique aspects of it not only what goes on down below me here but also the seating here um, and the vantage point at which you get to watch the game and I have been here long enough to, to realize that some of the fans give the uh, the outfielders a pretty good time out here <laughs> guys yeah I, I would say so Em. that's uh, just another vantage point where Bostonians can get on the opposing team Seems like that that comes with the price of the ticket that they get uh, that opportunity. Shinsu Chu leading off the uh, Ranger fifth inning. He grounds out now 0 for 3, and that is the first out here in the Ranger fifth. Two nothing Boston. Elvis Andrews coming up. I think the urge that some of the fans on top of the monster have to fight from time to time, maybe depending on how old they are, is the urge to like maybe toss an M&M or something yeah. like that at the left fielder. Yeah. Not anything big or 
anything that would hurt him, but just something that might make him turn around. You know, it depends on how old they're. If the older they are, the bigger the optic might be. <laughs> yeah. They have to hold back with more dangerous. <laughs> Elvis has flied out both times that he's come up here this evening. Once to center, once to right. Two balls, no strikes to count. Miley working quickly as he usually does. Fires a strike. Big comparisons. Uh, folks who with Wade Miley to Mark Burley as far as the kind of stuff. He probably throws a little bit harder than Burley, but the same kind of command and his desire to work very quickly and throw a lot of strikes. Yeah, I think he's, you know, he's got that aggressive look to him. It's not that he's throwing 95, but there have been a lot of batters that haven't looked like they picked the fastball up very well. Mm -hmm. You watch that ball that Elvis just hit to first base. He got jammed and dribbled at the first. Some of the balls that have been taken for strike three, some that have been swung at and missed. And then you look at the velocity and you say, gee, it was only 91. Doing something to make the hitters that not feel comfortable. Speedy one, two, three inning. Rangers gone. We played half the ball game. Red Sox two, Rangers nothing. And 14. First 15,000 fans will get an Elvis Andrews stolen base gnome courtesy of Coca Cola. Visit TexasRangers.com or you can call 972 Rangers for tickets. Yeah, Buzz, we were trying to find Gene Johnston sitting on top of the monster, and that's our best guess yep. because of the Ranger hat and Ranger fans around her. Hope that was her. If not, we're sorry we missed you, Gene, but. Looks like that's a distinct possibility there because there were grandkids involved. And the Ranger hat might be a the dead giveaway. And I think you have to be 75 to wear Ranger stuff up there, be allowed <laughs> in, don't you? I'm not sure. <laughs> well, Dustin Pedroia starting things off for Boston here in the fifth inning. Pedroia, one for two with a double. He doubled and scored back in the first inning. Pitch just off the outside corner, two and one. Uh, Pedroia, a 279 average as he uh, faces Gallardo. Lovani about ready for his 85th pitch of the night. Popped up. Moreland and Field. Mitch Moreland making the call. That is out number one before David Ortiz. Steps in the box. Let's send it back to Dana Larson for a Mazda game break.
All right, Dana, thank you. Well, how about Nelly Cruz? I, for all those folks that uh, said, well, last year was just a fluke and hit 40, <laughs> I think he uh, and he got that burr under his saddle. He's going to prove him wrong. David Ortiz, an RBI single in two trips to the plate. Ortiz now with 15 runs driven in. I saw the other day we talked about the speed of the ball coming off the bat that had been measured this year. And the one that uh, that Nelly beat the Rangers with up there in Seattle was uh, 119. Uh -huh. He got topped by uh, John Carlos Stanton. Uh, the second home run he hit that was over 470 feet went uh, 120 and a half wow. off the bat. Well, I'm not, not, not surprised that he's right there with Nelly watching that, yeah. that, that power in that swing. It's just. It's just impressive to watch when you see him swing. He had two last week in Miami that uh, both went over 475 feet. One was 478, and there was 476 or something like that. And a guy barehanded the second one <laughs> out in center field. That ball's well hit to right center field. That is up the alley, and that ball is gone into the Red Sox bullpen for David Ortiz. And Boston now leads it three to nothing as Ortiz. As his sixth home run of the year. Ortiz had only hit one home run in his last 70 plus at bats coming into the game tonight. He almost had one off the Green Monster earlier in the game. No, it wasn't Ortiz that hit that ball. Ortiz had a single his first time up, drove in a run to right field. Ball inside part of the plate, middle of the plate, Ortiz. Has always looked like the kind of guy that you could pound in. But he's hit a lot of home runs off pitchers thinking they could pound him in. Well, second Red Sox home run of the night. They've both been solos, but uh, Boston now leading 3 0. And Hanley Ramirez up for his third at bat. He lines one to right center field. That is down. Chew over to cut it off. He does. And going for two is Ramirez. The throw, and they've got it. Oh, he's safe. He's safe. He missed the tag, I guess. And uh, Ramirez comes up hobbling a bit. Elvis immediately looking into the Ranger dugout as if to say, hey, challenge that thing. I got him before he got to the bag. It looked like the throw was there that Elvis had to reach a little bit towards center field to get it. And by the time he brought his glove back, Mark Webner, the second base umpire, ruled that he missed the tag. We'll take another look at it and determine whether or not that's the case. Let's see. Yeah, it didn't look like he tagged it. No, sure didn't. Looked like he tagged the ground first and the glove came up. Here's, here's a spot shot you'll be able to tell, I think, better. Tagged him yet. Now oh, he tags him. Yeah, that's close. That's close. I did not see that from the other I angle. I didn't either. I think they might have gotten him from that angle. I, I didn't think there was any way he got him from the first angle. Oh, Joey Probinski, the Rangers Ranger that is in charge of checking out the replays, looked at this and said, Yeah, that's worth a worth a challenge. Sent that information down to Steve Bouchel. Uh, Jeff Bannister out of the dugout uh, holding things up while that information was given to him. He said, OK, here's the one where it looks like you can see him tag him, misses him here, comes up with his glove and tags him right there. I don't know if they'll overturn it or not, but I think if I saw that angle, I would have called him out. Now, the operative phrase is clear and convincing evidence to overturn or to uphold. And uh, the call on the field is safe. Mark Wegner, as Tom told you, made that safe call out there. So, folks down in New York, the uh, umpire assigned to this game will take a look at all the various angles that he can. Crew chief uh, Mike Winters with uh, one set of headsets on, and Mark Wegner, the second base umpire who made the call, has the other set on. So, they're listening for uh, the determination from New York, the replay command center, what that's going to be. Pretty good throw by Chu. That 
That ball was deep in the alley and Shin Tzu came up firing to second. Shin Tzu out there watching the replay himself. It's almost from the warning track. In, in normal motion and normal speed, that's a bang bang play at best. It's taken a long time to look at it. One sure of the longer are. reviews of the year. We we'll get get this to you in real speed now. This is what Mark Wagner saw when he was standing over it. There was no doubt in his mind when he made that call. The video has shown us there is doubt even in that. So we'll uh, we'll wait until the determination is made. And the length of time that they're taking shows that there's some doubt in New York too. Yeah. And it is safe. It is safe. We'll find out if the call was confirmed or if the call stood. The call stands. Okay, so the call was not confirmed. There wasn't clear and convincing evidence to dictate that it was the correct call but there wasn't enough to overturn it either so the call stands as called right there at second and that's the uh, the view that they were able to determine it with so Ramirez credited with a double is out there at second Pablo Sandoval who is one for two takes low and outside Sandoval single to center in the first inning. Grounded back to Gallardo in the uh, third. One ball, one strike. Red Sox now three runs on nine hits. They have had three doubles, two home runs. Gallardo again. Pounded to right but hooked foul. Way past the pesky pole down there. Just a long strike. It's one and two. And that was a long strike. Now 302 feet to where the uh, pesky pole stands. Foul pole that uh, famously signed by Johnny Pesky and company. Tommy Field cuts that one off. On to first base. That is out number two. On to third goes Ramirez. That's with Mike Napoli. Napoli. Crunched his fourth home run of the year last time up. Let off the fourth inning by hitting as quick a home run as you're going to see. Got out of here at about 315 feet from home plate and rising. And it went over the green monster out there. One ball, no strikes. So Napoli now four home runs, 12 RBI. Average of 168. Red Sox now have 40 home runs as a team this year. Take a look at our AT&T Uverse rewind for you. Mike Napoli getting that hanger in the middle of the plate. He hit a bolt that got out of here. One and one the count here. Mentioned this uh, Napoli's third year with the Red Sox. He had uh, 27 home runs the first year here in Boston. Last year hit just 17. Only had 119 games due to injuries. 
slowly hit out towards short. Elvis charging, can't find the handle. Everybody's safe. In to score, Hanley Ramirez. Napoli with the RBI on an infield single. It is 4-0 Boston. Now, if Elvis is able to get the handle on that, he throws out Napoli. Yeah, and I think the surprising thing is that Elvis didn't make that play. We've seen him oh, you know, in the last five or six years make that play so many times. And it didn't look to be that particularly hard of a play for someone like Elvis to make. But I think you are surprised when he doesn't make that play. Well, Napoli with his second hit, his second run driven in. Red Sox now have opened up a 4 nothing lead. And Daniel Nava, who has twice been jammed and grounded out to the infield. Nava, a 154 average. Taking it the other way, but that slices out of play to the left. Nothing in one. Nava, 0 for his last five. He has had. Uh, all but three of his at bats this year against right handed pitching. That ball not far enough away from Robinson Torinos for Mike Napoli to try to get to second. But it's no balls, two strikes. Here's Nap being held on by Mitch Moreland. Nothing and two. Gotta play again. Nava has always hit well against the Rangers. In the recent past, the last 12 ball games that he's played against the Rangers, he's gotten on base at a 395 clip. been up and down with the Red Sox for a number of years really hasn't been able to establish himself at the big league level another 0 2 is coming Moreland ranging wide of the bag will flip to Gallardo covering and that'll do it but the Red Sox come up with two more to get two runs on three hits and strand one after five four nothing Boston Tonight's jackpot is worth $100 plus dinner for two at Sonic Drive-In. Tonight, the Rangers are hitting for J.C. King from Hazlitt. And if a Ranger hits a grand slam during the inning, 
KC King from Hazlitt will win $25,000. You can register at any participating Sonic restaurant. A drive to straightaway center by Adrian Beltre, but Mookie Betts back there to handle it. And uh, Adrian, one long out to start off the Ranger sixth. Well, Beltre, the U turn at first. He is one for three as he heads back to the Ranger dugout. And Kyle Blanks will be next. Boy, and as it, the game goes on, Wade Miley working more and more quickly. He is not wasting any time out there. Blanks 0 for 2. He has been called out on strikes. Last time up, he popped out to second. In tight, one ball and one strike. Jeff Bannister was asked today about the uh, the line drive. Fair ball off the bat of Blanks into the left field corner. That is going to be extra bases as Ramirez... Very tentatively goes in to get the ball out of there. And Kyle Blanks with a one-out double. It looked like he was trying to throw that ball away and it cut back to the middle of the plate. Good try by Sandoval. He, he's a big guy, but for a big guy, he's got some pretty good agility, boy. Sure does. You wouldn't expect a guy that size to be able to take two steps and a dive on a line shot like that. Well, Blanks with his first hit of the night. Rangers have five of them. All told, and uh, Mitch Moreland, who has one, fouls off that first pitch. Oh, what I was going to say about uh, Kyle Blanks and the outfield, the way it's set up tonight with Delano De Shields in center. Uh, Jeff Bannister asked today whether that with Delano in center would be a, a platoon situation with he and Leonis Martini. He said no. It's uh, just a good opportunity to get Kyle Blanks in there in left field and give Delino an opportunity against a guy in Wade Miley who is tough on left-handers. And as Jeff said that uh, tomorrow with the right-hander on the mound, you'll see Leonis back there in center field. Mitch takes a strike down and away. It's one and two. There's Leonis. But well, Leonis has been struggling offensively and a uh, you know, night off to... Or night away, I should say, not a night off, because he's certainly available to pinch hit or, or play if need be. Just a guy like Miley is not unwelcome. Hector Ortiz knocking that one down. He's going to make a, a friend over there in the second row. One ball and two strikes to Mitch. More than a single and a walk. 299, the average for the Ranger first baseman. Mitch really didn't want to do it, and he couldn't hold it up either. Miley gets his seventh strikeout of the ninth. They're now two gone for Tommy Field. A good pitch by Miley. Looked like he threw him a slider. Let's take a look and see. Breaking quite a ways out of the strike zone. He came all the way across and out and outside like that. You know, Tom, you're talking about guys looking uh, against him like Miley's throwing a lot harder than what the radar radar gun would say. He throws a little bit across his body, and I would think for a hitter that you wouldn't see the ball until the very last second when he's thrown across his body like that. That's what it looks like. It looks like there's been a lot of pitches without great velocity that have been somewhat in a somewhat decent location to hit that the Rangers have either taken or missed or been a little bit late on so that would be what comes to mind right off the bat that he is a little bit tough to pick up and he is a little bit sneaky. One and one to Tommy Field. Tommy has struck out both times he faced Miley tonight and he's now in the count once again this time at one and two. So if you were facing a guy that like Miley threw across his body. Would you any, do anything different as a hitter to try and pick up the ball better? I think you just have to be aware of it. Concentrate a little bit more and try and be as quick quick as you can, knowing that that's something he's got going for him. The base hit to left. Blanks being waved home. Here comes the throw from Ramirez, and it's late. Blanks in with the slide. Into second is Tommy Field. RBI base hit for Field. It's a 4-1 to one Red Sox lead. And again, Ramirez is 
an infielder playing the outfield and I think you have to take try to take advantage of that every chance you get. I think an experienced left fielder with a decent arm is probably going to be able to make the third base coach hold Kyle Blanks but you can see Ramirez weight back on a little bit really not get much in the way of momentum coming toward home plate to get something on his throw and really not having a whole lot on that throw making it a close play at all so good move by Tony Beasley the third base coach to challenge him on that play. Well Tommy Field gets his third run driven in that's into the Red Sox lead Field taking uh, second on that throw home. Now Robinson Torinos will try and pick him up. Torinos 0 for 2 tonight. He has flied out, reached on an error. One ball and one strike. Robinson a 179 average as he faces Miley. Pulled the string and is in the dirt. Two balls in a strike. Okay. Robinson battling a little bit of an offensive downturn. Four for his last 23 times up there. Hammers this one but pulls it foul down the left side. And the count evens at two and two. Torino's making his 25th start. This for the Rangers, their 39th game. Ball club 12 and 12 in the starts that Torino's has made before tonight. Just barely gets a piece of that to stay alive. Tommy Field, the runner at second, picked up the RBI as he drove home Kyle Blanks with a two out single. Miley reading the signs in the dirt, and the count now is full. But Torinos has run the string all the way out. He is trying to get aboard, and if he does, the line with the shields would come to the plate representing the tying run in this ballgame. Payoff pitch. We will try it again. And a souvenir to take home with you from Fenway. You wouldn't think a baseball could make one man <laughs> that happy, but that happens every day at every ballpark around the country. Fly ball down the right field line. Nava going back, still going back. He can't get it. One hop and off the wall, and it goes deep into the right field corner. In to score is field. Chirinos all the way around to third with the RBI triple, and it's now a 4-2 to two Red Sox lead. Oh, when that ball went off the bat, it looked like one of those balls that might curve right around pesky pole right down the line. It's probably only about 280 feet right down the line. It juts out very quickly. But the wall and the proximity of the ball to the wall definitely caused Nava to be a little bit tentative going after that ball, and he wasn't able to come up with it. Daniel Nava, and he got turned around, turned every which way around down that in that uh, corner. That not the first outfielder that's had a problem down there. Stand up triple. Carl Willis, the pitching coach, out uh, very quickly to talk to uh, talk to Miley. Alexi Ogondo, former Ranger right hander, now toiling in the Red Sox bullpen, getting loose. Carl Willis, longtime pitching coach. No, a couple of two out hits. 
And now Delino to Shields does indeed come up as the tying run in this game. Delino has struck out both times that he's faced Miley tonight. Chirinos at third with two outs. Hard hit ball, but Sandoval knocks it down, recovers in time to throw out the speedy Delino to Shields. Rangers come up with two runs on three hits. They strand one. After five and a half, it's the Red Sox four and the Rangers two. Just visit TexasRangers.com slash vote and vote for the Rangers as your favorite or second favorite team and you'll get an offer for 50% 50 off select games in August or September. It's TexasRangers.com slash vote. Keone Kellen has come into the ball game to take over for Giovanni Gallardo. Gallardo uh, worked the first five innings, ended up uh, throwing 102 pitches tonight. 69 strikes. He leaves having given up four runs on 10 base hits. Kellahan now to face Xander Bogarts here in the sixth inning. Ranger bullpen has been worked hard the last uh, couple of weeks. Had to come in and put fires out. Work a lot of innings. Gone five straight games where they've had to work at least four innings. And that has uh, thinned out the ranks. Of course, the Rangers got uh, some added help. Ross Ohlendorf and Tanner Shepard's back. But it still has been uh, a difficult time down at the bullpen. Kella missing low. Three balls, no strikes. Sunday's game at the uh, bullpen worked 14th time in the fourth straight game. The bullpen has worked at least four innings. They have the most relief innings in baseball. And that's just even as well as the rotation had gone for a couple of weeks at a time. Overall, the bullpen has really, uh, really struggled. Well, they have been in a lot of games. Let's put it that way. They've pitched a lot in a lot of games. 3 1 pitch coming. Now 3 and 2. Well, Keone has had probably his best velocity in this at bat. Reached 97 and 98 on the radar game here in Fenway Park. And now Robinson Torino is going to go out and have a chat with uh, Keone.
Mike Maddox uh, making a phone call. Getting uh, the bullpen at least stirring around a bit. Now the payoff pitch. Shinsu Chu ambling over to his right. That is out number one. Keone and uh, Robinson Torino's getting together for that decision on the pitch, and it was the right one. They got out number one. And Blake Swihart, the catcher, will come in. Giovanni Gallardo tonight, five innings of work, ten hits, four runs. They were all earned. No walks, two strikeouts. 102 pitches, 69 strikes. Swihart takes strike one. Blake Swihart, a fly ball to center and a strikeout. Here's Weihart, and you watched the at bat right before you come to the plate. You saw pretty much every fastball between 96 and 98 miles an hour, and he comes to bat. First pitch is a breaking ball, next pitch is a changeup. <laughs> He's wondering, yeah, that's a lot of respect for a rookie. <laughs> Another changeup. Hadn't thrown him a fastball yet. Adrian, in foul ground, the ball bounces off of his glove and off of his chest and over to Emily. Hit that, Em. Adrian just overran that a little bit for. <laughs> he did check on my well being before I got to You did the right thing, I'm It would have been duck. his fault. It would, that's the fetal position as fast as I can, Tom. I'm, uh, not, I'm not ashamed. I would have done the same thing. I am not ashamed. Did you happen to call him off, Emily? Was that? <laughs> I did not. Oh, okay. I, did not. Right. I couldn't look. I couldn't see anything <laughs> except for my knees, Buzz. <laughs> there is no shame in my fetal position. No. Team. No, I can understand that. One ball and two strikes. Got him swinging. Another changeup. Adrian going in there and making sure. Emily, Emily, wake up. Emily, Emily, you all right? <laughs> I didn't know when it was safe. <laughs> you can't come out of the fetal position too early. It defeats yeah. the entire purpose. That's, that's true. That's a good point. Yeah, well, the ball went by you one way and came back the other way, so it's a good thing you held that position. <laughs> Now the first pitch to Mookie Betts is a fastball strike. Betts one for three. Second inning single. That was sandwiched in between a fly ball to right and a ground ball to third. Tony Kella drops the breaking ball in. Nothing in two. Keone is getting better and better coming into games. And if he needs to, showing all three of his pitches, fastball, breaking ball, and changeup. Done that today. Another breaking ball. Beltray tried to barehand it. The ball took kind of a crazy hop on him. And he knocked it down. By the time he picked it up, Betts able to leg out any attempt that Adrian would have had to throw across the diamond. Well, one on with two outs. That is going to be ruled an error on Adrian Beltra. First Ranger error of the game. Dustin Pedroia, the hitter. Pedroia is one for three. That's bluff to move to second. The only Cal pretty quick to the plate. So it's uh, when you haven't seen him the way the Red Sox have not seen him. Pretty tough for a guy like Betts to gauge the speed of the delivery to home off of Kellogg. Keller ready for the 1-0 pitch. That's 
It's out of play to the right. Yoni, the 22-year-old, raised in the uh, Seattle area, made a meteoric rise through the Ranger system. And watching his electric stuff, you can understand why. A ball and a strike with two outs. Red Sox leading four to two. We play in the bottom of the sixth inning. Keller right now losing the popularity contest at Fenway. Fans, especially on the first base side, tired of seeing that throw to first. Elvis, a little flip to Tommy Field. That will do it. No runs, no hits, an error. One man left for the Red Sox. We're going to the seventh inning. The Red Sox four, the Rangers two. Napoli launched his fourth home run of the year, leading off the fourth inning. And got the Red Sox up 2 0. One inning later is David Ortiz going into the bullpen. His sixth home run of the year. The Rangers got an opposite field triple by Robinson Torinos. Daniel Nava trying to battle the, uh, the Fenway curve down there. And, uh, 4 to 2 now the score as the Rangers come to bat here in the seventh inning. Shinsu 2 starting things off. Shinsu 0 for 3. A couple of ground outs and a strikeout against Miley. 3 balls, no strikes. Chu currently hitting at 236. There is a strike, 3 and 1. Trying to get aboard to begin things here in the seventh. He'll be followed by Elvis Andrews. Rolled over on one. And Pedroia on to Napoli for out number one. Well, the thing that Shin Tzu has done today the last several times up is that exact same thing. Take a pitch a little bit away, try to pull it, and tap a weak ground ball to the right side. And he's done an excellent job over the last few weeks of Pulling the inside pitch and taking that kind of a pitch to left field, and this is the perfect kind of ballpark to do that. Taylor made for Shinsu. He's got good power the opposite mm -hmm. way. So when you try to pull that kind of pitch, you you have really play right into Miley's hands. Well, his first ball swinging lines to right field. That is out number two. That's to be Prince Fielder. Yeah, it kind of goes back to what uh, 
Chu had told us last year, Tom, about hitting against left-handers. He said the reason he was having more success early last year against left-handers is he was able to stay on the ball and drive it the other way. Mm -hmm. And he's just had a little trouble with Miley tonight, whether it's you know, just Miley. Miley has the kind of stuff that he can. He has been tough on left-handers, so maybe his cutting action on his fastball makes it almost impossible to, yeah, to stay on. I think it does. Makes it a little tougher to do that. Prince has a multi-hit game tonight. Swing and a miss there. Fielder came into uh, play tonight. Tied for second in the American League with 17 multi-hit games. Number 18 tonight. And will uh, be at least tied for second, if not moving up toward the top. It's also extending his overall hitting streak to eight consecutive ball games. Two for three, a single and a double. Pedroia knocks the ball down, recovers, and that will do it. Oh, Wade Miley has a quick one, two, three, seventh inning. We'll take the stretch at Fenway, 4-2, Boston. It is David Ortiz tonight, two for three, a single, and a home run he has driven into. He's homer now in five of his last 11 games against the Rangers. David Ortiz will be leading off against the newest Ranger pitcher, and that'll be left-hander Sam Freeman. Freeman, a 27-year-old, grew up in Carrollton, went to Hebron High School, and played his college ball for a couple of years, University uh, I should say the North Central Texas College and went on to the University of Kansas. He drafted out of there. St. Louis for uh, parts of the 2012 through 2014 season. Now over here with the Rangers. Sam working to David Ortiz to start things off. First pitch zips in there for strike one. Ortiz a 246 average, six home runs, 16 driven in now. To center field <laughs> and the liner to Shields cruising to his right to make the grab. A big pop, he came into the game hitting 236, but he's. A couple of balls hard in this game. Three of them, as a matter of fact. Which one was hit harder now? That one or his home run? <laughs> probably pretty close. As far as where they hit on the bat, I think they both hit the sweet spot. And they sure sounded like it. And that just didn't get high enough to go much farther than that. So one out. Hanley Ramirez now steps in. Ramirez, like Ortiz, two for three. He's had a single and a double and scored a run.
slice down the right side. And uh, just in play as it bounces in the stands, a ground rule double. Well, there's enough breeze blowing out. And again, a very low stadium. It's uh, maybe about a, a deck and a half high. And the wind has a, a drastic effect on balls that don't have to be hit very high. And this one was pushed back towards center field or toward the playing field by whatever breeze there is tonight. And Sam Freeman said, you got to be kidding me. There's just enough of a breeze to get a little slicing action and the spin on the ball and also the uh, the flight of the ball coming back to the field to get that in for two. Pablo Sandoval tonight, one for three. And as Tom told you before, Sandoval having all kinds of trouble against left-handed pitchers. Yeah, it's... Oh, jeez. That got him on the left thigh, and that got him hard. I think it might have got him on the arm. Whatever got him, it got him. It got him good. Oh, you're right. right. You're right. Yeah, it does look like the leg. It hit the side of his knee, maybe. That had that uh, not much padding sound to it. That got him right in the knee, yep. it looked like. Wow. Oh, boy. Yeah. That's going to be hard to walk that one off tonight. Now, there's, boy, there's nothing you can do as a hitter. I, I would think that's. That's a pretty tough thing to get out of the way of under the best of circumstances. Sandoval helped to his feet and he's going to have to be helped off. Now, the good news is he can put some weight on it. Maybe not all of his weight, but he can put some weight on there. Adrian Beltre, his counterpart, down there at third. And Adrian grimacing as if the ball had hit him. He understands how much that had to hurt. Well, Sandoval will go back to the clubhouse, but probably do uh, precautionary x-rays. In the meantime, Brock Holt has come out of the Red Sox dugout. He will run for Sandoval at first. Brock Holt. Well, two on with one out. Now Sam Freeman will face Mike Napoli. Napoli two for three tonight. A home run and a single. Two RBI. Makes that first Sam Freeman offering high and outside for ball one. And he understands there has been a uh, scoring change. In the sixth inning, remember Mookie Betts hit a uh, high chopper that Beltre tried to barehand. And it originally had scored an error on Adrian. That error has been removed, and it's now a, a single for Betts. So add one more hit to the Red Sox total and take away the error from the Rangers. Also adds a hit to the uh, total for Peony Kala. But no damage done. Two balls, one strike is the count to Mike Napoli. Nap with the two hits tonight has the average up to 175 for the year. His RBI total now is at 13. Yeah, runners at first and second, one out in the seventh inning. Freeman misses high and away, three and one. Napoli hitting sixth in the order. Daniel Nava, the uh, right fielder, will follow. Foul tip. That'll fill the count. Dolly Feliz up and throwing. And uh, 
you know, Jeff Bannister said that no set roles now in the bullpen. He said you're going to try and mix and match and get the uh, get the bullpen to find out where the roles should be placed. Janichi Dazawa, the eighth inning man for the Red Sox, and that is a set role. He is uh, ready and willing in the uh, Red Sox bullpen. 3 2 pitch. It sends the line to Shields back, but he has room right on the warning track to make the catch. Both runners tagging. They will advance 90 feet. Ramirez to third. Holt to second. They are there with two outs. And Daniel Naba coming up. And while he makes his way to the uh, plate, let's uh, send it back to Dana Larson for a Mazda game break. Dana, couple on with two outs, and Jeff Bannister is going to the bullpen. So with uh, Daniel Naba being pitched in for by uh, Shane Victorino, Jeff Bannister going to the bullpen, and uh, Neftali Feliz will come out. We'll tell you about all the all about the right-hander when we come back right after this timeout. Service is celebrating 13 years. Watch every out-of-market game live or on demand in true HD. Real-time highlights, live look-ins, pitch tracking widget, and a whole lot more every night on every device. Visit MLB.tv for details. The Red Sox leading 4-2, threatening here in the seventh inning. Natalie Feliz has come on to relieve Sam Freeman. Well, Feliz uh, most recently fulfilling the closer's role on here to try and uh, shut down this Red Sox uprising. Well, it's obviously not a closing situation, but men on second and third, it's a key part of the game. If the Rangers want to have a chance to win late in the game, you have to think this is a great spot for Nuffy to come in and snuff out a rally. And facing the pinch hitter, Shane Victorino, right-hander, is hitting 212 with a home run and three RBI. Victorino used to be a switch hitter, but he's only hitting right handed now. Believes a check of the runners. Went with the breaking ball. And he falls behind now, two and one. Jeff Bannister. Do a little bit of uh, searching for roles in the bullpen. Last time we saw Natalie Feliz, you remember uh, blowing a save against the Cleveland Indians. That pitch outside. That was a Saturday game. Feliz came on and worked an inning. Gave up two hits and three runs. 
big home run to uh, Jason Kipnis in that game. That was his third blown save of the year. Three balls and a strike to Victorino. All four. Victorino walks to load him up. Xander Bogarts is now coming up. Bogarts tonight is one for three. He doubled in the fourth inning. Other than that, he has grounded out and fly down. Ramirez at third, Holt at second, Victorino at first. And the pitch catches the inside corner for strike one. Missed with a few fastballs, went to a breaking ball to try to throw a strike. There's plenty of opportunities to pitch after the fifth or sixth innings that are just as important as a save opportunity. And sometimes the jam is bigger than a closer will face in the saving role. Right back to Feliz. He goes up the ladder, pulls down the board. And flips on to first. So Nephi comes on, gives up a walk, but strands three. And will go to the eighth inning. It remains the Red Sox four, the Rangers two. A progressive upcoming schedule for the Rangers. This is the first of nine games away from Arlington. Two more with the Red Sox tomorrow night and Thursday night. Then down the coast to New York where they play over the weekend against the Yankees. Memorial Day, Rangers are in Cleveland. Mid-afternoon game and then a night game on Tuesday. And on Wednesday, an afternoon game before coming back home to face these same Red Sox to finish out the month of May. Junichi with Hazawa, the eighth inning man for the Red Sox now, will come on and take over for Wade Miley. Hazawa in his 20th game this year. Opponents batting only 206, and the back end of this bullpen has been locked down. Shane Victorino staying in the ballgame in right field. And uh, taking over at third base. Holt stays in for... Uh, Pablo Sandoval, Brock Holt now playing third. Janichi Tozawa misses up and in to Adrian Beltre. Beltre one for three tonight. First inning single and a couple of fly balls to center. And that fastball is right through there. Beltre apparently got something in his eye as he backed out of the batter's box. Mike Belinsky, the home plate umpire, uh, didn't grant him time. Uh, he ruled 
that the pitcher was too far along in the process to warrant timeout, which is his prerogative. One one pitch coming. Is that what that great split fingered fastball? Throws that about two thirds of the time. He and Koji Wahara have uh, really made the eighth and ninth inning difficult in the opposition for the Red Sox. Good fastball zipping in at 95. Two and two. Tazawa, one of those guys that has a very nice, easy, simple motion. The ball's got to look like it explodes on you when he throws that fastball. Two and two, the count. We'll come back and try it again. Red Sox four runs on a dozen hits tonight. Rangers two runs on seven hits. Beltre, Blanks, and Moreland. First three due up against Tazawa here in the eighth inning. Tazawa again set. Zawa's got plenty of fastball too. Registers at 95. Tough combination when you've got the kind of off-speed pitch that he does with that kind of a fastball. Well, Beltre, the strikeout victim, and now Kyle Blanks will step in against Tazawa. Blanks one for three. A double in the sixth inning and scored the first Ranger run. Zawa drops in that splitter for strike one. Nothing in two. About that. Here it is about 95, and oh, by the way, I might throw you a splitter every once in a while. One ball, two strikes. Tazawa is second, tied for second in the league with uh, his 20th appearance tonight. No way he'd be ready for no. that pitch after three straight 95 mile an hour fastballs. Back to back strikeouts. Well, our DraftKings uh, player to watch, Mark Desher tonight, two for three. Jose Quintana, five innings of work, six hits and two runs. Miguel Cabrera of the Tigers, one for four with a single. Bryce Harper, another night with a home run. A solo shot, four watch. Go to DraftKings.com. Enter the promo code DTOWN. A two up, two away on punch outs for Tazawa. Here's Mitch Moreland. One ball, no strikes. Mitch, a single and a walk. One for two officially. I think it's 294. Tazawa coming back to the plate. And misses low and inside. Mitch has not had an at bat in regular season play against uh, Shinichi Tazawa. Matter of fact, only five, make that four current Rangers have. Elvis Andrews has the most at bats with seven. And he's got five hits off him. Foul back and out of play. It's two and one. But Rangers need a bunch of base runners if they're to get Elvis up here in this inning. Elvis hitting second in the order. Mitch right now is hitting sixth.
Tommy Field waiting in the on-deck circle. Tozawa set for the 2-1 offering. And slicing toward the seats down the left field line. A trio of Red Sox over there, but it's back a couple of rows out of reach. Ramirez, Bogarts, and Holt all uh, over to take a look. And smiles for the victors down there. Out of baseball, of course, he broke his $300 glasses, but it's all right. <laughs> well worth it, right? An even trade. Yeah. The way they go after it sure looks like it's even. Tazawa to Moreland. Hard hit. Diving stop by Napoli. He will beat Moreland to the bag. Mike Napoli taking extra bases away from Mitch Moreland. It turns into a 1 2 3 eighth inning. After seven and a half, the Red Sox four, the Rangers two. That's what you're supposed to do at Fenway Park. The Rangers looking for a comeback. Neftali Feliz back on the hill. Great play in the field for the Rangers. We're going to get you ready for game two, game two of this series. I'm out of breath from all that magical singing I just did. Prince Fielder and Dustin Pedroia looking to continue their hot hitting of late. Game two, once again, 6 o'clock here on Fox Sports Southwest. Thanks to AT&T U-verse for bringing us all that good information, and I apologize to everyone's ears. I just couldn't resist. <laughs> yeah, well, I thought that was pretty good. You did great, huh? <laughs> yeah. It's fun. You know, why not? That was pretty cool. I think it was last year or the year before when they actually got Neil Diamond yeah. to come out here and sing that yeah. down the right field line. Doesn't get much better than that. That song really caught on. Well, after the great play that you saw by Tommy Field to Rob Blake Swihart of a leadoff single, back to the top of the Red Sox order. Mookie Betts, yeah, one of the better scoops at first base you'll see, too. Tommy goes way over to catch it. And Mitch stayed with that ball, took a huge hop, kept his foot on the bag, and made the catch. Mitch has got really good hands at first base. It's fouled into the love of. Robinson Chirinos, two balls and a strike. 
Betts tonight one for, or two for four. Had that uh, single added to his resume in the sixth inning. It originally was a, an error on Adrian Beltre, but they changed it to a base hit. Right center field, Chu and Delano to Shields. It's the Shields, the center fielder. Making the call on the catch. That is out number two. Our Kubota power stats of the night. Koji Uhara. Who if the, we'll see if the score stays the same. Eight straight scoreless appearances. Seven and two-thirds innings. He has not allowed a hit. He has two walks, eight strikeouts, six saves in six opportunities. And there is Koji. You can tell by the glove. If nothing else, we can't. Yes, you know, just look for that big orange glove. Yeah, it, that. the color is the color is different. And it, I don't know if it's just him, but that glove looks like the biggest glove in baseball yeah. for some reason. Like a basket. It is. It's a bushel basket that he painted orange. You can almost test that for the regulations to see if it's too big. <laughs> Dustin Pedroia up for his fifth time to the plate. One for four. The outside. One ball and one strike. Pedroia, 275 average. Had a double and scored the first Red Sox run back in the first inning. Neftali Feliz out for his first full inning of work. He got the last out of the seventh inning in relief of uh, Sam Freeman. Some uh, concern from around uh, uh, us diff different parts of the media about Neftali Feliz not striking people out. Pedroia drives one to deep left center field. It is high off the wall. The Shields playing the carry, but Pedroia with his speed able to leg it into a double. There's one with the Green Monster took away a home run. Yeah, definitely. Green Monster, I think it, I don't know if it takes away as many as it gives up. Probably not. Because there's more pop-ups than line drives like this. But that definitely is a home run in most ballparks. Sometimes you hit one like that and pull it a little bit, and it's only a single. At least he got a double. Pedroia throughout his career has been a doubles machine. One of the quickest players ever to get to 300 doubles. So with uh, Pedroia at second, they're going to go ahead and intentionally walk David Ortiz. But what I was going to say about uh, Tali Feliz, he had not struck out anybody in his last uh, three outings coming into tonight. There was some concern about that. Uh, Jeff Bannister just kind of poo pooed it, saying, Don't worry about it. You know, if he's getting outs, that's fine. But, of course, last time out, he couldn't, he couldn't say that about it. He had the the blown save and giving up the home run to Cleveland and Jason Kipnis. Do you use that as a measure of how well a guy is throwing, Tom, as a number of strikeouts? I, I do. Yeah. I mean, I, I understand what the manager's saying, and it's pretty much what he has to say that if my guy's getting people out and doing the job, I don't care how he does it. And I'll buy that too. But, you know, a guy like Neffy. To me, it makes a difference if he's striking guys out. It makes a difference whether he's throwing 91 or 96, too. Yep. And there's, you know, there's a lot of times where he comes in throwing 91, 92, and mixing in his slider, and that's fine. But, you know, that's not the guy that made the all-star team. That's not the guy that was the closer on a World Series team. That guy came in throwing 96, 97 miles an hour all the time. And I don't know whether it's just inconsistent with it, whether it's not there like it used to be, except occasionally. I'm not sure. But the bottom line is you can pitch any way you want. But I think he's got a better chance of being consistent and getting people out if he's got that mid 90s to upper 90s velocity. And I don't think he's quite the same guy if he doesn't. But I, I think the other thing you couple with the lack of strikeouts lately, guys are hitting 300 against him. Yeah. And that yeah. that concerns me more than not having strikeouts. Mm -hmm. you know, it's one thing if you come in and you're able to trick people and, and stuff like that and, and not have a lot of base hits against you. But. Well, if you're not able to to uh, cut down the number of hits, that's a problem. So the intentional walk to Ortiz got runners at first and second with two outs. Hanley Ramirez, three for four this evening. Well, there's a, go ahead, that's right. There's a few few closers who maybe are power 
sinker ball kind of guys that don't strike out a batter per inning, but there's a lot of closers who strike out a batter per inning. And a lot of a lot of closers who strike out more than a batter per yeah. inning. Yeah. Justin Pedroia at second. I think the other thing is as a pitcher you'll always get the benefit of the doubt if you're throwing 98 miles an hour. If you're not if you're not getting the job done it's well he's throwing the ball great. You stop throwing 98 and you start throwing 91 or 92 and and then you're inconsistent getting people out and then velocity is a major issue. Elvis a fancy little short hop pickup gets the force and that'll do it. No runs a hit. Two men are left. We're going to the ninth inning. Four to two Boston. West Airlines by AT&T U-Burst TV and by Ford. Now the ninth inning has arrived here at Fenway Park and the closer is on hand for the Red Sox. That would be Koji Uohara. We saw the last half inning what we were talking about with Koji and he has not allowed anything of late. This overall is 14th appearance. Yeah, Koji is one of those guys who he doesn't light up the radar gun either, but he's got he's got something in the way of deception that makes that 88 mile an hour fastball look 98. And the other thing that makes it look 98 is the splitter that he throws. And the combination of the two has saved a lot of games and struck out a lot of batters. His strikeout to walk ratio is always among the league leaders. And Jackie Bradley Jr. is coming to the ball game for the Red Sox, taking over for Hanley Ramirez in left field. Bradley, uh, an outfielder by trade and primarily a center fielder, but John uh, Bradley used him in left. Leonis Martin has come off the Ranger bench to pinch hit for Tommy Field against Wahara. Now Leonis, a 198 average with a home run and eight driven in. Wahara back to the 1-1 pitch. That splitter in the dirt, two balls and a strike. Koji Wahara. The numbers we showed you his last seven outings, that was since blowing his only save of the year. He has just been lights out. Apparently that lit a fire under him. That ball is rifled to right field and deep. Going back is Victorino. That ball's gone. Leonis Martin, a pinch hit home run, and the Rangers cut the lead to one. It is four to three. Well, there's that 88 mile an hour fastball, straight as a string, in a fastball count, and an aggressive hitter looking for a fastball and jumped on it. You know, there's sometimes leading off an inning in a two run game in the ninth inning, three and one, you take a pitch because you try to get a man on base, but very little chance that Uehara is going to walk anybody. 
And he throws that pitch right down the middle of the plate. So why take it if you can get a good swing at it? Just make sure you get out in front of it, which Leonis did. You got a guy that's a little bit wild. You might not swing so freely right there, but Koji's pretty much proven that he won't walk it. As you saw, that's the first run that Wahara has given up. First base hit that he's given up in his last eight times out there. Well, Robinson Chirinos now represents a tying run as uh, Leonis Martin, a pinch hit solo home run. Last ball high and outside, two balls and a strike. Chirinos with the RBI triple in the sixth inning. Robinson now with the 14 RBI hits this one well to center field. Backpedaling though is Betts. Not able to make the grab shy of the warning track. Koji is not the kind of pitcher that can get behind in the count and throw fastballs. He has to get ahead in the count to where you're not sure what's coming or be able to have the confidence in his splitter to throw it in a fastball count. Both hitters have teed off on those pitches where when they're ahead of it. He heard that sound. Yeah. <laughs> and he said, oh, no, not again. I thought it was hit to the wrong part of the park. See him shaking his head. Well, one out. And again, Jeff Bannister going to the uh, bench and comes out with the only other pure left-handed hitter, and that's Carlos Peguero. Peguero with those numbers, a 188 average with four home runs, nine driven in. And he is representing the tying run. Guerrero, 0 for his last 15 times to the plate, takes strike one from Moara. Carlos, uh, all four home runs came in a five game span on that last road trip to the Rangers. He finds himself now down in the count, no balls, two strikes. Koji went up the ladder steadily on Figueroa for the strikeout. Two gone. See one run at a time, the last two, and uh, Carlos Figueroa just didn't have enough to get on top of it. Well, the Rangers now down to their last out, and Shinsu Chu stepping in 0 for 4 tonight. Two, three ground outs and a strikeout. And he looks at strike one. Off the end of the bat, tough play coming in for Holt. Bearhand throws it's wide. And off the seats, backed up by Pedroya. Oh, two, an infield single. And the Rangers have the tying run aboard with two outs in the ninth inning, and Elvis Andrews coming up. Nice try by Holt. Just couldn't make an accurate throw from that angle, charging it as hard as he had to charge that ball. So Elvis will step in. Andrews one for eight lifetime against Wahara. 0 for 4 tonight. Tying run at first with two outs in the top of the ninth inning. Nothing in one. Elvis one hit against Koji was a double. Jew at first, a modest lead. Strike two. Stag pitch tracker showing you why Elvis was kind of rolling his eyes at the call. Oh, and two. Fly ball to right field. Victorino with the play, and that is the ball game. For the Red Sox, they uh, hold on to win four to three. Rangers 
making noise in the ninth. A pinch hit home run by Leonis Martin got him started. They got a two out single by Koji Wahara, but left him stranded. And uh, Koji Wahara with the save, the Red Sox with the win, and the Rangers could not make it two in a row. It took two hours and 50 minutes to complete. We'll be back to Fenway Park to wrap things up right after this on Fox Sports Southwest.